come here this evening and learn your word. May we embrace uh, your word with our hearts so that it will influence our, influence our lives. May we be open to what is taught to us this evening so that we will apply it in our lives as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 1428. Akusate, Hote, Ego, Apon, Himen, Hipago. That word Hipago, see that Y in the front of that? that that's a capital Ypsilon. Or some grammars say Upsilon incorrectly. Kai, Erkamai, Pros Himas, A, Agapate, Agapete, Me, Ekarete, on, hote, paruamai, pros, ton patera, hote, ho pater, maison, mu, esten. Let's look at this first word here. I want you to conjugate that for me, brother, uh, brother uh, Knuckles. Conjugate that ekusate. What's it say down below? You're out of luck. All right. What's it say down below? Pamela? Uh, Person? Second person plural. What is that? What is second person plural? You all. Okay. All right. What else now? <coughs> second person plural. First aorist. Indicative active. Learn how to read that. Second person plural. First aorist. Indicative active. So we got you all. You all heard. Okay. You all. Who's he talking to here? His church, okay? You all heard that I told to ye, I go and I come. Look at that word, hippago. Remember what present indicative active is? Let's, let's recite that congregation together. O, ace, a, omen, eddy, usi, ain. O, ace, a, omen, eddy, usi, ain. So this here is hippago, so that is what? First person singular, all right? Present indicative active. I, literally, I undergo. I'm underway. Like a, a shipment term, we're underway. I'm underway is what he says. And I come. Look at that one now. And I come. Er come I. Now this is first person singular, I. And in present indicative middle voice. I come by my own volition toward ye. Who, <coughs> this is really, you got to understand the Godhead here just a little bit. Jesus said, you destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Bible also says, now this is not a contradiction, but he says also that the eternal spirit raised Jesus from the dead. And then it also says the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Now who raised Jesus from the dead? The Godhead, period. The triune God, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I, I come here for myself. The Bible says Jesus said that the Father sent him. But also says that he sent himself. John 1.14 says, Kaholongo Sarks again, and the Word, or the Jehovah flesh, he became for himself. John 1.18 says that uh, no one has seen God at, the, at any time but the only begotten God, the one being inseparable in the bosom of the Father. That one has led himself out. Do you understand? The Godhead, Jesus didn't do anything that was contrary to the Godhead, to the triune God, okay? And whenever he did something, whatever he did, he did it. And the Father accomplished it and the Holy Spirit accomplished it all triunely did you bring all yourself here tonight Corey you brought your spirit and your soul and your body all right see we're doing okay that corresponds to what Father Son and Holy Spirit all right I come for myself to you all who's he talking about who's the you all here who's the you ones <clears throat> this is the church that he's talking to, all right? He's talking to the church as a body, each individual in that church. He said, I come to you all. Now, 
Look at this. A there, that's a conditional particle. It's a first class conditional particle, by the way. That means since. Ye keep on loving. This one here, let's conjugate this one here. Uh, Corey, can you conjugate that one for me? Agapati. <coughs> Agapati. The end of the second line. Okay, and perfect indicative active. All right, so what does this tell us? Ye keep on loving. Ye keep on loving me. Me there, what do you think that is? This is a first person pronoun. And it's in the accusative singular, masculine real, all reality. Ye be caused to be rejoiced. To rejoice. Ye be caused to rejoice. If you keep on loving me, It'll cause you to be joy, rejoice. <coughs> he said, if you keep on loving me, if you keep on serving me, you'll have reason to rejoice. Would or if. Now look at this word here, on. Now, on is a conditional particle, too. This word on here, this is a third class conditional particle. This is a condition that undetermined would be a prospect of determination with it. The third class conditional particle. I go for myself, all right? Now, why do we, well, that's actually, it's the first class. Would, that I go for myself. First person singular, present indicative middle. See, it's indicative mode. If I go for myself toward the Father, because the Father greater of me he is. What do you mean greater of me he is? Is the Father greater than the Son in quality? No. Right now, Jesus was in subjection. His body was in subjection to the Father. Okay? His body, his personal being on this earth in body was in subjection to the Father. All right? <coughs> Only because he became flesh and blood. Jesus was humanity. He emptied himself of all tremendous pre-incarnate glory for a time. Even though he had powers at his will, he still was in subjection. 1429. Kai Nin Ereka. Amen. Amen. Tren. Pren. Ganeste. Hina. Hotan. Ganete. Pishuete. And now I have told. Look at that one. Erika. First person singular. Who's that? I. Perfect tense. What kind of action is that? Completed action. I have told. All right. First person singular. Perfect indicative active. I have told to you. That's dative plural. Second person pronoun. Before to happen. I'm telling you this before it's going to happen. That's what you call prophecy. Only God can really, only God can make true prophecies. Hina, in order that, Hotan, when? It may become, literally, it may become. That's Genemai. What is the word in Hebrew for this? Come on, what's the equivalent to this word Genemai in Hebrew? What is it? The haya, the root of the word Jehovah. All right. When it becomes, when it may become, ye may believe. When this happens now, when, when I'm telling you, when I die, when I'm uh, crucified, and when I am buried, and when I raise from the, when I'm raised from the dead, or I raise myself from the dead, you will believe. You will believe. You may believe. Look at that now. <clears throat> now, if we were a super lapsarian, you, it would be you will believe. All right, but right here, what mode is this in, Brother Roger? Well, it's in the subjunctive. In the subjunctive mode, you may or you may not. Subjunctive mode is a mode of doubtful affirmation. It may or it may not happen. Some of them would believe. Some of them wouldn't. Who wouldn't believe? Judas. He was part of that church. There's where you have the first lost church member that we know of. There may have been more, but we know he was. 
Second person plural. You all. First heiress. Knife blade punctiliar action. Subjunctive mode. Mode of doubtful affirmation. It will or will not. It depends upon the volition or the volatative quality of the spirit in the person controlling the body. All right, 1430. <clears throat> Satan's time is near. Old Satan's about to stick his ugly head up again. Ukete. Pola. Leleso. Meth. Himon. Erkete. Gar. Ho. Tu. Cosmu. Arkon. Kai. In. Emoi. Uk. Ake. Uden. <clears throat> no longer. Ukanete is where it comes from. Uk, adverb of negation. Ete is like an adverb of time. No longer. Many things. No longer. Many things. Pola. I shall speak. Let la leso, la leso, la leso. What? Function of what you know. There's a lot of words to speak in there, to speak or to say something in, in Greek in there. What word does this? What does this connotate? What does it carry with it? The idea of what, brother Dick? You remember? Remember that, Corey? Pamela, la leo, la leo, Lego, la leo, huh? Legos. I speak to pick out. This is la leo, la lo. This means to speak with human faculties of speech, a tongue, with your mouth. Okay? <coughs> he is going to speak with us in his human form through his human abilities to speak. Okay? I shall speak with you. With you all. That little preposition, met, that, met, that comes from meta. It's shortened form there. For euphony, what does euphony mean? Euphony. What's euphony? You means what? Good phone. Good phone. Phonograph. Good sound. All right, good sound. Euphony. He is coming. Look at this now. Erketai. He is coming for himself. Third person singular, present indicative. What, what voice is that in? That's in middle voice. He's coming for himself. For the of the world ruler. Who is this rat? Huh? Who is this who is this world ruler that we're dealing with right now? Huh? Who is the world ruler that we're having to put up with? Satan. Satan, old Lucifer himself. He's running the show. He's the one that's causing all the trouble, all the bad storms, all the earthquakes, everything else. He's the one's behind it all. Don't blame any of it on God. This is the kingdom of Satan. God has a kingdom within that kingdom. You understand that? God has a kingdom within that kingdom. And that kingdom and within that kingdom is run. The administrator of that kingdom is the Lord's New Testament churches today in this age. That's who it is. <coughs> <coughs> the ruler of this world, the archon, the head. All right. Ephesians 6 and 12. Let's go there real quick. Ephesians 6 and 12. That statement, Paul the Apostle is writing to, to uh, not to anything, but to all the churches of the area. That's what we call a general epistle. Ephesians 6 and 12. <clears throat> Verse number 10 starts out, uh, for, the remaining, for the remaining ones ye be empowered in the Lord, in the might and the strength of him, and tie yourself up in the whole armor of the God, uh, so you'll be able to, strong enough, to stand against the methods of the diabolos, of the devil. The methods there, methodios. That's right, straight out of Greek, methods, methodios. Because not, it is to the wrestling match in close quarters, uh, against flesh, against blood and flesh, but toward the arkos, same word, 
toward the rulers, against the authorities, against the world grabbers. That's what it said, the world, the cosmos grabbers. Of darkness, belonging to darkness, and this against the uh, uh, spiritual, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenlies, the spiritual forces of evil. <coughs> we are wrestling today in God's kingdom. We're wrestling against the forces of evil all around us, and it's quite a wrestling match, isn't it? Just look at it. Look at the laws. If you didn't have highway patrolmen on the on the roads, what would happen? You'd have total chaos, wouldn't you? If you didn't have sheriff and police officers walking the streets, what would happen? You don't have enough of them, but you need a whole lot of them. I think we need almost like one for every three outlaws. Yeah, a lot of them. Right now, out on ham radio, <coughs> I've been a ham operator and playing with radio since 1960. And I have never seen such outlawry on the radio waves as they have right now at this time. You know, people talk about how bad it was on CB. You know, you get on certain, you, you see drug pushers and prostitutes and everything on certain channels there and everything. It was uh, pretty bad, you know, for a long time. But on ham radio right now, on some frequencies, there's outlaws out there that are just thumbing their noses, shouting, and, inc and just blaspheming the Federal Communication Commissions and daring them to do something to them. I will jam. I will play filthy music. I will play satanic music. I will do anything I want to. I will cuss. I will use slur racial slurs. I will do anything that I want to. And nobody's going to stop me, and it's just rampant. They go from frequency to frequency, and where people are meeting, they'll gang up in there and they'll just scream and holler and, and jam and play music and just all kinds of outlawry things, horrible things. You cannot believe. I'll get on there and get to teaching the Bible sometime, and you'll hear one of them will come on there and he'll say, Satan loves me, this I know, for the Christians tell me so. And they'll start singing this kind of stuff and, and playing this background music satanic. Boy, I mean, in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, if they'd have done that on ham radio or CB radio, they would be in jail and have tremendous fines. But right now, it is t totally at the mercy of outlaws. That's pitiful. Outlaws, rulers of darkness. Their father is Satan. Satan satanic activity people that need to be locked up <coughs> the world the God of this world 1431 it's in every avenue of society does the Bible tell you to go out and kill people to get them converted if the Bible tell you if they don't believe what you believe that you're supposed to go out there and blow their houses up if you're the different color than you are, you're going to go burn their houses down. You know, that's happened over the years. You know, take their land away from them, whatever. Because they're not people. That's happened all over the world right now. All the time, constantly. Why? Because the ruler of this age. But just thank goodness that it's coming to an end. I told, you know... <coughs> There's a sermon out there that I preached in 1982, Why the World Didn't End Today. And <clears throat> that's when Harold Camping made his first prophecy that the world was coming to an end. And I preached that day that the world was supposed to come to the end. And I said, why the world didn't come to an end today? Why isn't the world going to come to an end today? Why isn't it going to come to an end today? Can you tell me? Roger, <laughs> why isn't the world going to come to end today? I was really impressed. It never sunk in until you said it. It's still got a thousand and seven years to go. We've got a thousand and seven years to go before the world comes to an end. We've got a tribulation period. We've got a rapture. Then we've got a tribulation period. We've got 1,000 years of Israel ruling on the earth. 
And then at the end of that, you know, Satan is going to be locked up to Revelation 27 through 9. See that right there? He's going to be locked up for a thousand years. He won't have any say so on the earth. And then God's going to do something. You know, there's a lot of people on the earth at that time that they're only serving God because He makes them. But even then, it's volition. He's going to turn the old devil loose and he's going to go out and there we have the battle of what? What battle is going to take place there? It's not Armageddon. The battle of Gog and Magog is going to take place right there. And that's the end of it. And then we have the great white throne judgment and we have a new heaven and a new earth. First, Second Peter 3.10-13 Revelation 21.1 and 1 Corinthians 2.9 But right now we've got to put up with this rat. But when the rapture takes place, we'll be looking down on it. For 1,000 years, we'll see the earth in total order, just like it should have been in the Garden of Eden. For 1,000 years. And you know what? That's the throne room of the universe right there. The throne room of the universe. How many Edens have there been? How many Edens have there been? How many Edens? How many Edens? Two. The one that Satan was in, or Lucifer was actually in, it was his throne room. And then God built another throne, throne room and called it Eden on, on the earth. And there he placed Adam. And then there's going to be another throne room for the thousand years. The throne room is going to be where? New Jerusalem. And God's going to put everything back together. Everything is all messed up right now. But all things are going to be in all and one in all in the eternal ages. That's going to be something else. Let's go on a little further. 1431. Allah, Hina, No, Ho, Cosmos, Hote, Agapo, Ton, Patera, Kai, Kathos, Entelato, Mu, or Moi, that is, Ho Pater, Hutos, Poyo, Eg, Eg, E, Reste, Og, Gomen, Enthum, Enthuen, Enthuen. My book is written up so bad that I can hardly read the Greek. <laughs> <coughs> had asthma all day long. Excuse all of my coughing today, please. But in order that you or he may know the world, or it may know the world. Actually, the world is masculine. Did you see that there? Whole cosmos. In order that he may know the world. Third person singular, second air, subjunctive active. He may know the world. That I love the Father. I want the, the I want the world to know this. John three sixteen, brother Dick. I know you can quote that verse. For God so loved the world. That's so. For God so loved the cosmos. God wants the cosmos to know that the Father loves the Son and that the Son loves the Father. And because of that, God sent His Son that He might redeem the whole cosmos back. He's not going to leave one rock unredeemed. Did you know that? Not one pebble. All the space dust is going to be redeemed and bought back. And we get to be part of that whole deal. But I love the Father, and just as He commanded me, the Father. Third person singing the first air is indicative middle. He commanded me for Himself. The Father, ho pater, just so or even so or in this same way or manner, I do, first person singular, present indicative active, I do, ye raise up. <coughs> May we go or let us go from here, from this place. A little adverb there, from this place, from this place. 15 and verse 1, we're in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to John. Ego Amy. Boy, John just keeps on rubbing that in, doesn't he? Hey, 
ampelos. He alithano ne. Kai ho pater. Mu ho Georgos. Esten. <coughs> Jesus is the genuine messianic vine. Psalm 80 and verse 8. Genesis 49, 22 through 24. He's a root out of dry, dry ground in, in Isaiah uh, 5 and verse 1, and Ezekiel 19 and verse 10. He is the door in 10 and verse 7. He's called a shepherd in 10 and verse 11. He's called a vine here in 15 and verse 1. He is a true messianic vine. Yes? <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. That's feminine. A vine is feminine. Even though we know that Jesus is masculine, don't we? Remember like the Holy Spirit is called a neuter? Well, see, the vine here, since it is a neuter word, it has to be neuter, even though we know that it's Jesus. So here you have an example, Brother Dick, where the masculine gender referring to the Holy Spirit in many places. But the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is neuter. But the Holy Spirit is not a thing. It is a he. It is part of the masculine Godhead. And here we have the vine. Yes? So in the definite article, the with the line, the, that means it's masculine. The, the Father. Yeah. Whole the Father. Father is, of course, Father is masculine. You see the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the whole is masculine. All right. I am Ego Amy. Exodus 3.14. I am the vine. Okay, I am the vine. I am the root. <clears throat> a lot of people started churches, churches by their own authority. Did you know that in the last 2,000 years? Cain started one there in the garden, or just outside the garden. He started a, his own church, didn't he? He didn't want to... He didn't want to go God's way, so he, there's we have the first false religious system. And false religion, all, false religion always persecutes the truth, doesn't it? Baptists haven't ever persecuted anybody. We may talk bad about them. That's as far as it's going to go. I'll tell you, Jehovah Witnesses is lost and going to hell. They got their doctrine all wrong. I'll tell you, the Mormons are in bad shape. They got the wrong God, and they're not going to make it to heaven. I can tell you that Gar Garner Ted Armstrong and Herbert W. Armstrong's outfit, the Worldwide Church of God, just isn't going to make it because they replaced Jesus. Jesus is not God. You're not going to get to heaven unless you believe that Jesus is God. He's Jehovah in the flesh. But I'm not going to go there and blow their church houses up or anything like that. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Islam will do that. The Catholic Church killed between 50 and 100 million people through the Dark Ages up until the present tense. And don't think they're not still doing it in places. And usurping their great authority wherever they can do it. They've cost untold 50 to 100 million. They like, that's almost depopulating the world, isn't it? When you think about that much, between 50 and 100 million people. That's like the population about, what, a, a third of the United States right now. How much? How many people in the United States right now? I've lost track. 350 million. Huh? 350 million. 350 million. <clears throat> so that would be almost a third. Like they populate almost a third. That's what the Catholic Church has done. Now if we leave Islam alone long enough and let them do it, they'll catch up. They will. They'll catch up. I am the vine, the true vine. I am the genuine vine. I'm not a wild root. I am the real root. When you go out and you get walnuts, you know what walnuts, almost all English walnuts and everything are grafted onto what? Wild black walnut roots. That's what's down below. Wild black walnuts, and they're grafted on. Orange trees are grafted. Many trees are grafted. They have... They have good vines grafted on these strong roots. But here we have the opposite thing. Here we have the genuine root. And we have, we are grafted in. We're like wild olives on a wall of tree. All of this. Wild olives don't have very good fruit, do they? No. That's like these, uh, these wild plum trees that don't have fruit. 
they call them ornamental plums, things like that. Those are wild. See? They don't have much fruit on them. But here we have the real fruit. We have the real trunk of the tree. If you're going to do anything, do it God's way. <coughs> I am the true vine, and the father of me, the vine dresser, he is. He's the vineyard foreman. He's the pruner. He's the one that guides it. How many of you ever heard of these bonsai plants and stuff? Bonsai. And they twist and they make those things. That's what God does with our lives. He tries to form us into something beautiful from something ugly. Something beautiful from something ugly. 15 and verse 2 now. <coughs> Pond. Clayma. In Imoi. May Pharaon. Carpon. Ire, Alto, Kai, Pon, To, Carpon, Veron, Kathare, Alto, Hina, Carpon, Pleona, Ferre. Every limb, Clayma, every limb, every limb or every branch in me, not bearing fruit. He takes it away. What's it talking about? What is the primary interpretation of this verse, of these verses? What is the primary interpretation of it? What is it? It's not really Christians. It is Christians, but it's not. What is it? What's the primary interpretation? What church did Jesus found? The one that John the Baptist called out. That's his. Okay? If that church continues, the seven churches of Asia in the, in the book of Revelation, all right? Second and third chapter of the book of Revelation there. Those seven churches of Asia, remember? He said, if you don't straighten out, I will take your candlestick from you. Right here, we're using an uh, analogy, a, uh, a type that if you don't bear fruit, I'm going to chop the limb off. Over there, he's going to take their candlestick away if they do not. And we're talking about true churches. We're not talking about wild plants. We're talking about true New Testament churches. True New Testament churches, many heresies began in true New Testament churches. If you don't believe me, just read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John in the book of Jude. Galatians, Hebrews. These are real Christian, so-called Christian people that got in God's churches and wanted to tear them up. First Timothy. We wrestle, as the book of Ephesians says, the the what we call the general epistle of Ephesians, which was to all the churches. We wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Who is empowering these rascals that get into God's churches? Satan. Jesus had one in his church. What was his name? Judas. Don't worry that we got them in our churches today. We got things that Satan's ideas, the world. <clears throat> I was listening to a sermon. I was taping a lot of sermon and putting them out on sermon audio. And I was taping some classes and chapel services at CMBI where I went when I was in in 19, late 60s, 70s, and, eight, and early 80s. And I was taping these things. And Brother, actually, Dr. Larry Crouch got up and was preaching to the young people. And he said, I want you young men, I want you to study the Word of God and just absolutely inhale it. Because if you don't do it, you will go out and you will get involved with some unscriptural outlaw group. And don't tell me it's not possible because I can just name a whole lot of names. All these people that have done that cut, went right here to this school two or three years and then off they go. You know, the, <clears throat> the truth really limits what you do, doesn't it? Doesn't it? It limits what you do. He said, we're 20 years behind the world. What the world is doing right now and we think is so ungodly, Twenty years from now, it'll be in churches. You just watch it. The devil's going to get his foot in churches. You just watch it. 
He said, you mark my words. What we're doing today, 20 years from now, this is what we say is ungodly, terrible. Ugh, don't do that. It'll be common practice in, in churches 20 years from now. Guess what? It happened. 20 years. That was 40 years ago. There's two different groups. 20 years and 20 years. 40 years. 40 years from that time. What the world was doing out there, what the world, even what society said was wrong, is being practiced in churches today. In 20 years. It'll happen. You can fill churches up that way. You can do it. I guarantee you can do it. Every limb or branch in me not bearing fruit. Every church not bearing true fruit. He takes it. And every the fruit bearing, he prunes it. What happened to the churches in the early age? you remember what happened to the churches in the early age, Pamela? Pamela, did you listen to those church history tapes? Okay. You know what happened to the churches? You, they, they, God purified them. You know how he does that? How does he purify something? With fire, with tribulation. The more they killed them, the more they grew. You really want to build a church? Don't go to the world. Let persecution hit you. Let the devil come after you. And people start shedding their blood. That's like fertilizer. You, you don't believe me, just go start church, study, study church history. Every branch in me not bearing fruit, he takes it. Takes it away. It's lost its candlestick. Now, you can uh, secondarily apply this to a Christian's life, but the primary interpretation of the Scripture is what? Churches. True New Testament churches. Okay? <clears throat> and every the fruit bearing he prunes it, in order that fruit more it may bear. Fruit more it may bear. He's trying to form these people. Churches are not buildings. Churches are people. They're covenanted together, people gathered around a Bible. They call it the Holy Bible. And they're trying to hold to what it teaches and not vary. Okay? When they began to vary, and you go back in church history and you'll find when they began to vary. Let's see what happens. When you tell one lie, you have to tell three to make up for it, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the way it is. Catholic Church got so bad they took the Bible out of the hands of the people so they wouldn't know what they were doing. Can't have the Bible. Only in Latin since you can't read it. It's all right. You know, it's, it's, it, it, it won't harm us any. It won't harm our doctrine, our teachings. Because if you get to reading the Bible, you're not going to be a Catholic. That's why King James was put out. The, King, the Church of England split off in the Catholic Church, but they wanted something to keep their people from becoming Baptists that were reading the Bible and to keep their people from becoming Catholics, which didn't read the Bible, they were just totally... Catholicism is tradition. Catholicism is heart strings, not brains. No person, no intelligent person would go and join Catholicism. That was a Bible student. It's not going, you're not going to do that. Not going to do that. Why? Because Catholicism is anti-biblical and it's anti-rational. It's anti-rational. It's not rational. Catholicism, I mean, not Catholicism, but Islam is more rational than Catholicism. Think about that for a while. Islam is more rational than Catholicism. Why? Catholicism, you've got everything pointed to one person on earth that can take you to heaven, and that's all the Pope. And he's got all these little imps running around, the priests and the cardinals and the bishops and everything else that are helping him get you there. Now that's real stupid, isn't it? We know that the only way we're going to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible tells us. But now in Islam, let's look at Islam for a moment. Let's look at the light on Islam. You're born in this world, a free agent. Sounds rational, doesn't it? Humanistic rational, that's not what the Bible teaches. 
You're not responsible for anybody else's sins. You're not responsible for Adam's sins or anybody else's sins. You're only responsible for your own sins. And if you can do good, more good works than bad works, you get to go to heaven. That's totally humanistic and totally rational, isn't it? That's the way the world thinks, isn't it? Brother Dick, have you ever talked to people and asked them, are you going to go to heaven or hell? Well, I, what do they say? I'm a good person. I haven't, done, I haven't robbed any banks today. I haven't killed anybody for a couple of weeks. You know, I haven't beat my wife. I haven't killed my husband. They all say, you know, compared to what? That's humanistic. But the Bible simply states that Jesus Christ died for the sins of all mankind. Now that is a real... You have to have faith to believe that, don't you? Hebrews 11 chapter. You have to believe that God did that. Where's the belief, where's the trusting come from? For by grace ye are having been saved through faith. And that what? That faith is not from you, it's from God himself. If you read the word of God, it will lead you to God won't lead you away from God. The Holy Spirit is the, is the comforter. Also, the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. It comforts the church, but it convicts the world. And the Holy Spirit won't lead you any place except to a New Testament church. That's where you're supposed to serve him. Not some fly by night outfit like we're just talking about. That's not even, never been hooked on to the... Well, most churches in the world today, they don't even have an origin. Free Will Baptist started in 1611, basically. They're not Baptists at all, period. The Calvinists started in Calvin's day, okay? You've got your, your uh, Lutherans from Luther. Don't go back any further than that. Back before that, they go back to the Catholicism. Of course, Catholicism, you get back there about two, 300 A.D., and it becomes Baptism. They're all Baptist in practice and doctrine. <coughs> they just started going away. They got cut off. They got trimmed off of the true vine, the true trunk. <coughs> Every branch or limb in me not bearing fruit, he takes it and he away, and uh, the one bearing fruit, he prunes it in order that it might be more fruitful, that it might bear more. <coughs> A day, 15.3, Hemes Catharoi, Catharoi, Esti, Diaton Logon, Hon Leleka, Hemen. Now ye clean ye are. Look at that word, Catharia, Catharoi, Catharoi, the word name Kathy, or Kathleen, comes from that name right there, clean. The word Catharsis also comes from this word. Catarize comes from this word. Now ye clean ye are because of the word which I have spoken to you. Look at that word there again. The word logos. It comes from lego. Okay. Logo. That means I speak. That means to put things in a row like ducks in a row, fence posts in a row or whatever. Which I have lay lock, la le leka. La leleka. That comes from la leo. And that means it's to speak with human speech. God came down to earth. The book of Galatians says that, that Jesus was made of a woman, made under the law. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the gospel is the gospel. <coughs> I think about the 22nd or 23rd chapter, I mean not chapter, but class that I recorded up there. Now I, I preached hundreds of classes in Fish Lake Valley up there. If you go back there and you listen to those people, I'm trying to tell them what the gospel was. They were these people meeting in this little trailer house, not much bigger than this, a little trailer. And uh, they didn't have any foundation. They were Baptists, and they were Southern Baptists. They had a good foundation, a good arm to begin there, but they didn't have a Bible teacher. And I came there, and I, before long, I realized that these people didn't know A from Z in the Bible. So what do you do when you don't know A from Z? What do you do? You have to teach them rudimentary things, the very basics. 
So I said, I think I will teach these people what the gospel is. So I asked them, and you can listen to them now. They're fighting with me. It was a wrestling match. Here I am, a theologian, trying to teach these children. I mean, not children. Some of them 50, 60, 40, 50, 60, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, okay, that had never been taught anything in their life. They don't even know what the gospel is. I said, what is the gospel? In the book. The Bible. That's the gospel. I said, no. That's not the gospel. The gospel's in it. What is the gospel? I said, tell me what the gospel is. It's the book. It's the good news, you know. We, I've got a good news Bible. See this? Good news. That's the gospel. I said, I want you to go to the Bible, and I want you to prove to me what the gospel is. Prove it. Well, you can't do that. I said, go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. No, 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 no. I'm mean, all this is going on. You hear all this going on there. Hear it still right now to this day. No, 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 no. This is what it says. This is the good news. And all that's going on, you know. I know that this is. One guy back there, this is the gospel. Can't even read and write. <laughs> He's got a Bible with him, but he don't know how to read it. Okay? This is funny. Finally, I read it. The Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Let's go there quickly. 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. <clears throat> I've had a ball in my life. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Moreover, brethren, this is King James, by the way. I can really read King James. I can do it. It's the Episcopalian Bible right here. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also ye received, and wherein ye stand. This is the gospel now. I said, now I'm going to preach to you the gospel. This is the gospel. This is the gospel right here. I said, listen. Let's do this. If you want to come up here and read this for me, you know? Let's look at this together. By which ye also are saved, if... I said, some of you might not be saved because you don't know what the gospel is. Oh, look at me like this, you know? that Boy, I mean, we're, I, I, I've been sold to the whole bunch. I said, some of you might not be saved because you don't know what the gospel is. I know what the gospel is. I got it right here in my hand. I can't read it, but I got it. Okay. If you keep in memory which I preached in you unless you have believed in vain. I said, look at there. I said, some people go to church, but they don't even know the right truth. This is what we're talking about. Over here in John the 15th chapter, we're talking about the truth now. There are a lot of churches wherein does not reside salvation. There are a lot of them. They don't know what salvation is. For I delivered unto you first all of all that which I also received, how that Christ, this is the gospel, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas and then of the twelve. All right, it goes on and tells the proof that Jesus Christ died. Now he came according to the scriptures, didn't he? Genesis 3.15 is the first promise of the Messiah and the first promise of the Antichrist. I told them that and I looked at that and they just sat there just dumbfounded. Dumbfounded. They didn't know what the gospel was. Now they've been introduced to the gospel. Now I said, do you believe in Jesus Christ as God the Son that Jehovah came to this earth? Some of them didn't. Some of them been from the Jehovah Witness camp. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is God that came down to this earth and, and pitched his tent in human flesh? That he was born of a woman like Genesis 3.15 says, according to Genesis 3.15 and all the rest of the scriptures? Do you believe that? I said, have you repented of your sins? Did God convict you with his spirit? Now here we're talking about the act of salvation, the very point of salvation. I said, do you believe that, he, that God became flesh and that he dwelt among men? And they lived a perfect life. And he really was born back then. It really happened. This happened. That he, that he lived the perfect life that he did. That he was born in the right place. That he, was, that he was raised in the right place. That he preached in the right place to the right people. Do you believe that he died on the cross of Calvary? That he was, that he was buried with... That he was surrounded by outlaws, it says, with the outlaws and that he was condemned with the outlaws on the cross of Calvary 
that he died and was buried. I'm not talking about that he swooned, that he went and passed out and he fainted for three days. And he was in the ground for three days and three nights. And that he was raised from the dead. Dead. That when he went down there that he preached unto the, to the, to the inhabitants of Hades. And they all heard him down there. The good ones and the bad ones. On the bad side, they heard the voices of the, they heard the voice of Jehovah, the same Jehovah that walked with Adam in the garden, telling them that I have overcome the world. And when I leave this place, I'm going to take you people that have believed in me back with me. It's a beautiful story. That's the gospel. That is the gospel. If you don't have that, if you don't have that experience then you need to have it. It's a necessity. A dire necessity. <clears throat> and now ye clean ye are because the word which I have spoken to you all. That's you all there, Brother Dick. That's a second person plural personal pronoun. 15 and verse 4. It's very important that we remain in the truth. Contending for the truth in the truth. That's what the title of Brother Larry's message was that I listened to this morning. Contending for the truth in the truth. You can't t contend for the truth outside of the truth. You've got to do it in the truth. You've got to be saturated with the truth. You've got to know what the truth is so you can propagate the truth. Manate. In moi. Kago. In himen. Kathos to klema. U dina te, carpon, ferrain, ah, he autu, yon, me, mene, and te, ampelo, hutos, u de, himes, yon, me, in, emoi, mene te. You remain in me, and I in you. Just as the branch, not it is able to fruit to bear. The branch can't bear fruit. It has to be hooked up to the roots. Did you know that? <coughs> A branch can't bear fruit. It has to be hooked up to the roots. Now, if you want to go out and start your own church and just begin, you know, and try to figure out what the truth is, you're not hooked up to the trunk. That's not it. John Calvin tried that. Martin Luther tried that. And those churches have been successful for hundreds of years, haven't they? They've been successful. They're out there preaching some truth. But before they can preach the truth, they've got to come to the truth. The Baptists tried to get Calvin to do that, and they tried to get Luther to do that too, and both of them persecuted the Baptists. They didn't want to have it. They didn't want to have all of it. By the end of Calvin's ministry, by the end of Calvin's life, he was just about a died in the world Baptist. When he got to the end, he, his whole life was an evolution of theology. And he got closer to truth as he went on through his life. But it didn't come to the truth. It didn't come all the way to it. That's quite a leap to say you're wrong and these guys are right. And I killed some of them <laughs> in the meanwhile. The fruit is not bear, to bear fruit from itself unless it may remain in the vine, the ampello, the ampello. Just in this same manner, who tells? Not, moreover not, ye, unless not in me ye may remain. If you, you don't remain in me, <coughs> you can't bear fruit. If you don't remain in the truth, you can't bear fruit. Were there some of these people that went off into error? History tells us they were. Some of them went off in error. Judas Issacharit was the first one that we know. <coughs> 15 and verse 5. <coughs> Hebrews the 4th chapter and Hebrews the 6th chapter and Hebrews the 10th chapter. The book of Jude was written, the book of Jude I titled it when I translated the Acts of the Apostates. The 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John 
It is the boundaries which the truth draws. And John went on to draw these boundaries. If they believe this, you don't have anything to do with them. Boy, he even named one guy by name and said, stay away from that snake in the grass. When John was in this one place, I believe it was the Ephesus where he was, this heretic went in there in the public bath. And the apostle John wouldn't let, he wouldn't go in there with that man. He didn't want that dirt to rub off on him. He was very vocal against it. Yet he was the one that says, love you one another. He said, love you one another, but when it comes to the truth, truth draws boundaries. He couldn't love that guy. Because that guy didn't love God. Not only didn't he love, did not love God, but he said Jesus Christ wasn't the Messiah. He said Jesus Christ wasn't God in flesh. And that angered John. That's why John wrote that fourth gospel in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John and the book of Revelation. God inspired him to do it all right. But every time he did it, he emphasized who Jesus was. That he was really man and he was really God. And that he was really in the flesh and that he really died and that he was buried and that he rose again. Paul emphasized it in 1st Corinthians 15 chapter that we just saw. Also to the Galatian Christians that couldn't quite accept salvation by grace. And to the circular letter that was sent out to all the churches, for in grace ye are having been saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. <clears throat> we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. If we're in him, we will do good works. We will, our lives will change. We will try to be receptive to his word. We can get on the outs with God, even the closest child of God. You think so? Yeah, you can. We can get walking out there in the wrong direction. And God disguises us back in. Disguises us back in. If you listen. If you listen. <clears throat> if you come and you hear God's word preached in its purity. And you look at it from the original languages. If you've got some kind of spiritual weirdo hang up. Pretty soon it's going to wash that out. It's going to get rid of that. Because that original language doesn't mean much leeway for what you believe, does it? <coughs> I am the vine, and ye the branches. The one remaining in me, and in him, this, he bears fruit much. Because apart from me, not ye are able to do anything. We cannot do anything. We can go out on some tremendous limb, some program as churches. This talking to churches now, people. It's talking to churches primarily. Secondarily, you can apply it to your own lives. But it's talking about churches. Churches going out and walking away from God. When they walk off from God, don't expect that limb to stay connected. Just got to stick with it. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says that Jesus would be with his church until the end of the age. John 15 to 6, of course. Ephesians 2 and 12. <clears throat> you can bear much fruit in the Lord. Well, we went from 14, 28 to 15 and 5. You know, writing all this Hebrew business, Brother uh, Roger, makes me write backwards. Does it you? Do you? Do you write backwards sometimes? Do you start going that way? <coughs> makes you dyslexic. <laughs> Absolutely. Dyslexic. They are dyslexic starting from right to left. Everything uh, this side of Jerusalem goes from left to right. Everything that side goes from right to left. Backwards to us. you have any questions? Sonia? you have a question? No? no. Corey? No question? You had a good one tonight. Brother Dick? Ask me something I can't answer. I know. I said, That's a dangerous thing for me to do, you old theologian. Say, have you got any questions? Yes. Anything? How about it, Pamela? Right in First John, he, he talk, John talks against Judaism, but more against agnosticism, the Gnostics. 
he was fighting more of the Gnostics and those people that didn't believe in the literal presence of Christ in this world that the eternal God became flesh they just said that's nonsense only in spirit only in spirit that he wasn't a real person that he wasn't raised from the dead and if he wasn't raised from the dead what did they do with the gospel the gospel's gone it flew it's gone the birds had flown and that's it there's nothing left nothing left you can go quail hunting up in the mountains. Come upon a, quail, a covey of quail, and if you don't get them while they're there, they have flown, you don't get another shot. Because they can fly better than you can run and walk. Unless you've got a bird, bird dog with you or something can chase some of them down when you miss them. <coughs> I had one like that one time. <laughs> My friend, he would go pheasant hunting, and he had this dog named Queenie. She was a German short hair. And Queenie, if you missed... He's gonna, she's going to bring that pheasant back. Regardless. She didn't have to bring any back for me. But every now and then, somebody would miss, and she'd go get it and run it down until she caught it. Just keep on going. It would be nice if the Word of God was like that. The Lord sends His Spirit after you and tries to guide you to go into the, into the flow of the truth. God will guide you to it. Any other questions? Brother Roger. Now, there's a person now that, that I'm a little bit afraid to ask a question. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for your word. <clears throat> I ask you to let it go out and dwell in people's hearts. I ask you to use this word for the next several years and maybe many years. I don't know how long it's going to be before you come back. But I pray that, that it will lead people to the truth and lead people to salvation. People that are just religious that might become Christians and that might seek truth in all its reality. Not some of it, but all of it. Father, thank you that I was able to preach your word tonight, that you gave me one more time to be a minister and to be a, a preacher of the gospel. Thank you for that. I am not worthy. It is you in me working through with me. It is your power and your spirit that makes your word so powerful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.